Hi, Ramsey Mean DDS, uh, BurbankDentalImplants.com. The topic is osteoporosis and dental implants. Can you have implants with osteoporosis? Well, it depends, but the general answer is yes. And it's going to depend on how it was treated and if it was treated. And uh, let's, let's go into it a little bit. So basically osteoporosis is more common in males than it is in females. It's a process where your bone can become more brittle because you're losing the balance of the bone cells. Like you're supposed to have a certain amount of uh, bone cells that are making bone and certain bone cells that are breaking down the bone. We call those osteoclasts and osteoblasts. One makes, one takes away. That's a balance. Just like your skin rejuvenates itself and becomes new and and some people will go through the process of making their skin smoother because they want new cells, new bone, new turnover of skin cells. Same thing is in the bone. Your entire skeleton replaces itself. Every bone in the entire body does that. So if you think about it, having an implant, it depends on bone healing, right? You need bone to attach to the implant. So if we don't have bone attaching to the implant, or we don't have as many bone cells, it might take longer. It might have a little bit of a lower success rate. But it has to be handled differently, it, especially if you've taken a medicine that, that is meant to treat osteoporosis. Uh, those are called bisphosphonate medicines. The most common are Fosamax and Boniva. Those are the oral pill forms. And then there's other forms which are injectable, which are much more potent. And I've written some articles on that as well. So the let's talk about um, you know management of osteoporosis. Uh, in the way that I do things, if I know the bone is softer, the osteoporosis may have not affected the jaw, the upper and the lower jaw, directly, but the bone is usually a bit softer, especially in, in females. So that means I might compress the bone, I might densify the bone, I might connect the implants together, I might use a special type of implant, I might use remote anchorage like into the zygomatic bone if you're having missing all of your upper teeth, or we might not do as extensive of bone grafting, uh, or have to use more of your own bone if you are, uh, if you have osteoporosis, if your T score is really high, um, those are things you have done on a DEXA scan. Then that's a possibility that your doctor prescribed you a medicine to treat the osteoporosis. Uh, that can cause a complication called uh, medication-induced osteonecrosis of the jaw, and that can cause the jawbone to actually die. Um, or not heal or become exposed. So there's some tests, there's some controversy on whether those, how valid those tests are, but each and every person has to be managed individually with other risk factors such as diabetes, um, steroid treatment long term, to see whether you're at risk for, uh, for osteonecrosis where the bone would die from taking these. So it, it takes a, a, a dentist that really knows what they're doing to manage a patient with osteoporosis, especially for a full arch or full mouth replacement, especially the upper jaw, because it's much, much softer. So the bottom line is yes, you can have implants with osteoporosis. It just needs to be managed differently, and your dentist really needs to know the ins and outs of your, of your medical history. And I would suggest definitely seeing somebody that's got a lot of experience in this field Osteoporosis typically affects the, the hip and the spine, and sometimes people get wrist fractures as well. Uh, but in general, it, we just have to, again, handle things much differently than with uh, perhaps a blood test if you've taken one of those medicines, such as a CTX, uh, and adding in a, a blood platelet concentrates, like taking, taking blood from your own, uh, your own arm, concentrating it, making LPRF, using that to enhance the healing, to attract the right cells, to get things going. And again, different techniques, different types of implants, different loading protocols. There's a lot to this, not just put a screw in and hope it works or, or have, some, have it as some sort of an afterthought. Uh, but again, if you have uh, comments or questions, please, um, please write them in the comments below on the blog directly, not necessarily on YouTube, as the blog is much more active for questions. And thank you so much. Uh, take care. Thanks for watching.